Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next The Promised Neverland manga review. This one's going to be for chapter 141 and it's called The Promise from a Thousand Years Ago, I, I assume part one. Um, so very, very interesting approach here with this chapter of, uh, I think I said it in the last video that I think to even explore the idea of Emma making a new promise, you had to explore the details of the first promise and how it was made, how it came about, so the same mistakes can't be made here, or, you know, getting to the root of, you know, how exactly the promise is made so Emma can be sort of more informed on that and that's exactly what we get here the chat the chapter just being called that you know the promise from a thousand years ago they're giving us a full flashback sort of origin arc here I really really appreciate that so uh, we open up with just I suppose a little bit of a kind of recap of sort of what our characters know so that we're sort of in this position of like okay yeah yeah that's what we knew about the promise uh, the first promise uh, prior to this chapter and here's the full story. So we just get the idea of, you know, uh, the one is a being who stands atop all of demon kind, we'll make a new promise with him. You know, what if, what, uh, just what kind of promise is it and how? Um, and uh, that's what is explained here. Uh, there wasn't just one promise, so it's a uh, humans shouldn't hunt demons and demons shouldn't hunt humans. Uh, let us separate the two worlds. Uh, that's the promise that was made with uh, humankind with uh, demon royalty. And um, the other promise was for the humans and demons to work with the one. Uh, as we see sort of in the background of all of this, uh, what I assume is, uh, you know, I think Julius Rattray, I assume, or, or the, the Rattray clan member who makes the, the promise in the first place, uh, one of the demon royalty, I suppose making the promise in front of the one here. Um, and so the, this, this is where we catch up with the last chapter of Emma once again saying I've come to reforge the promise and the response that we immediately get is the one just saying okay and Emma's like shocked you know okay you know w that was simple and he's like okay what do you seek and she says that was simple much simpler than I thought no this is good but and then he says but you must give me a reward and this is obviously where things could have changed. We, we cut from the current promise about to be made to the old one of, I suppose, one of the Rattray members saying a reward. And the demon guy saying, yes, this is the price for bringing forth what you seek. To bring your wish forth, uh, you give him what he wants, no refusing. Only then may you reach a promise, as the two of them, I suppose, are going to head through the seven walls. So this is where then we get this uh, interesting kind of page here, I suppose, almost getting across the idea that we are sort of entering this whole like borderline other series in a way because of how like a completely different cast of characters, a completely different era. And we just get this sort of title page featuring, you know, the, the main cast of the flashback in a way. So it's very, very interesting uh, what, what, they're, what they're doing here. Um, the characters, just looking at them there on, on screen, you know, you've got the big guy with the hammer in the background, you've got an owl, of course, you've got uh, Julius Rattray there, and then very, very interestingly, you have three characters at the front who look very, very um, familiar to us. Obviously, the kind of genders are a bit different, you know, in, in the certain cases, but, um, you know, you have a kind of Emma-looking character here, the commander guy. You have a woman who is very Norman-looking, and then a guy who looks very Ray-esque. Um, and the idea, especially where they get to by the end of this chapter, where the promise seems to come about within the war between humans and demons is some sort of a betrayal and we know that what ends up happening as part of this deal is that a certain group or selection of humans is left behind passed over to the demons and that's where they get the current people who are at the farms from and again we don't know the specifics of how the new babies really come in or, or anything like that but they borderline seem to be creating the idea here of that, you know, the the people who are currently trying to free themselves, Emma, Ray, Norman, 
are the descendants of the same people who were initially passed over to the demons to just be their source of food going forward in this new promise. But we'll get into it now, the start of the 1000 year flashback. So just over a thousand years ago, uh, we see that it's this battle that's happening between demons and the humans. And very interesting, uh, the humans are all in sort of knight armor. That is the complete way to, to say this, you know, um, like knights at a round table style stuff going on here. Complete, uh, you know, armor, swords, and the demons, you know, are using their typical weapons as well. So yeah, we get uh, Lord Rattray here, you know, saying that uh, if we can beat them here, this point is ours. We'll be one step closer to peace. Uh, as they kind of rally, you see bows and arrows, spears, swords, uh, they have uh, owls as well, kind of flying in in the battle as well. We get a double page spread of this battle happening, and I suppose the uh, counter-attack of the humans here as they take out a bunch of demons. Uh, and then you see the, I suppose the survivors walking through the battlefield, there's dead on the human side, dead on the demon side. Uh, and then we have, I suppose, the meeting of the, the minds here, of our main characters here. Uh, they're just kind of sat cross-legged, you know, it is a, a, a round table, but it's on the floor, I suppose. Um, and we get this uh, conversation here. So we get our sort of Emma leader type character, but it's a guy saying that there are countless casualties today as well. And uh, one of the other guys says, how long will this fighting go on for? Uh, the Ray character yeah, says, uh, but uh, just now we overthrew an enemy point. That's a victory. The big guy says, uh, what can we do next to win? And our Emma-like character says, Peace, I wonder if there'd be a way forward through those means. Um, peace, they all begin to kind of consider this, you know, as if they'd ever agreed to that. We need to think of a, meth a method to actually, you know, get through to them. But before that, we have to resist. Then Julius Rattray, who he's the one with the owl, of course, on his shoulder, is the one to say, We'll offer up a portion of humans. What do you think? And this is where we get that his name is Julius. And... Um, the Nor female kind of Norman-like character says uh, they'll feel much more eager to negotiate if they know they won't have their food source cut off. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So we'll offer them up in advance, as if planting fruit trees in the garden to supply you with seedlings. For example, villains or slaves would be fine. Not to mention the people uh, whose worship... Not to mention the people who worship those monsters, aside from them. So obviously this is presenting the idea of like, okay... Uh, villains, uh, criminals, slaves, or people who worship the demons. That's interesting, a sort of religious uh, group of humans who are maybe more supportive of the demons. That's interesting. Uh, they're all like, you know, what are you saying, Julius? That doesn't sound like a leader at all. Um, it's, it's a rational judgment, but it's sorely lacking in morality. That's what the Ray-like character says. And Julius just says, uh, yes, my apologies, I'm not feeling like myself. Please forget it. Uh, uh, I'm sure you were just thinking of what's best for our depleted armies. Uh, and then our Emma-like character says, um, but if we offer them up uh, this one time, they'll want to demand that perpetually. And for that reason, I cannot accept those measures. How odd that we all met each other on this battlefield, and now we're joining forces, putting aside nations to, uh, and race to fight. So it presents this idea of that it was a tough thing for this to happen to get to this point of just the different parts of humanity uniting uh, on, t to form like a unified front against the demons to even get to this point. That was a struggle. Now they're here and it still, you know, backs up against the walls. Uh, so it's, uh, be it through peace or fighting, the goal is victory for all of humanity. Countries and ranks, we need to detach ourselves from those. Um, let's protect everyone until the end. Only a little bit more, everybody. At last, victory is in sight. We won't be eaten. We're going to grab a hold of this world. Yeah, so that's, I, that, I think that feels very in line with the sort of thing that Emma would say of, you know, everyone is going to escape, you know, no one else will die, and in this case, no one else will be eaten, we will have peace, we will win, and, you know, the idea of being more about protecting everyone rather than necessarily it being all about destruction, so uh, that's, that's uh, I think, really good characterization on our kind of uh, Emma-like character of the flashback. And so we get the next battle uh, this time around, and, um, you know, we just get the idea that they're they're fighting back, they're inspired, uh, and then it says, but then I remembered the odds of victory are something that could be undermined in a matter of seconds. 
uh, and suddenly a new demon has entered the battlefield. It's from the royal family, it's royalty, the, the royal family that's strength, it's Archduke. Now, the uh, scandalation here says uh, Archduke Lewis, but this is uh, Archduke Louvis, um, is the official translation of this. Um, and I, I don't really get why Lewis is the translation here, just because, to me, the demons, uh, it fits more in line with them that their names would be kind of different sounding. So Louvis, I think, sounds much better than just Lewis. Like, one of the best villains of the series so far, his name, is, his name was Lewis as a demon. But either way. L Luvis is who they're talking about here and we see a much I suppose younger Luvis here but he's not like a kid or anything like that he's huge like compared to the way we saw him in the the arc where he was killed this is he just looks crazy crazy powerful here like his mask looks uh, kind of different it, it's it's him in his prime I think is what you can tell just bodies of humans all around him and he just says oh how beautiful the moon is tonight um, now then, you're all that's left, and um, the uh, Julius Rattray here is just saying, like, you know, yes, I am the only one that's left. And he says, that's when I realized I'm so tired. I want to go back. I'm fed up with this. For the people, for the troops, none of that mattered. I was tired. It's going to be over soon. And when, and when would that be? It was all lip service. I saw a chance at winning, but now there's just no way. I'll finish this right now. I will. And he throws his sword down and says, I assume you are Archduke Lu Luvis. I want to meet your king. I would like to make a deal. And the kind of uh, tagline here going forward is, Betraying his comrades, the start of this tragedy. So uh, the battle didn't seem to get across the idea that um, any of the known characters were killed. This was, I suppose, um, Rattray leading his forces in this battle. And they got obliterated by Luvis. And he's tried to create a deal here, and we'll see if he's going to, I suppose, sell out his friends. And that will explain how the Rattray clan gets in close with the demons, while the, I suppose, clans that, I suppose, effectively Emma, Ray, and Norman come from are the ones that are actually the sort of livestock in the farms. Um, and I think it's a really cool setup. Um, it, it, even though it is a, a little on the nose with these characters, I think it's very fitting to make that connection right now of that is the significance of what's going on here. That they present the idea that, oh, we'll just give over criminals and, you know, the, the worst of our people. And, and that way, even though it's not moral, it's at least an agreement to help things. But it seems like whatever happens, the, the deal eventually gets to the point where it has to be you know, Rattray's friends, and he has to betray them to get to this point. Um, now, obviously, I suppose the specifics on the demons is that uh, they sort of become what they eat. So, I suppose from their perspective, they prefer to eat the more noble characters than the villainous characters, um, or the slaves, j just because, uh, from their point of view, they'd be the more intelligent characters, I suppose. Um, maybe that's the the logic in all of this, but uh, we'll have to see exactly what that happens. That the setup of like the one wanting a reward from Emma, and he got one in the past, and that it specifically is a separate part of the promise is that to work with the one, which makes it seem like he's not just a demon, but you know he is sort of the one above demons. So it's it's there's a, there's still more to come here, but um, you know we're we're getting more chapters of this. Um, but I think it's 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 pretty impressive. I think so far. Um, there's not a ton to say just yet, uh, but this is ultimately I think you know the way you you expected it to go roughly. Um, you'd wonder maybe how how much of a betrayal, how villainous in a way they'd make the the humans who made the promise. And it seems like they're maybe leaning into that a little bit more with regards to Rattray just, you know, I suppose saving his own skin of just being tired of all of this and, you know, being willing to do anything to end it as long as he's in a good position. That seems to be the direction right now they're heading in and we'll see why the, the other characters, uh, what they make of it. No names for the other characters, that's why, you know, you have to refer to them as like, uh, you know, our Emma ancestor, Norman ancestor, Ray ancestor, and so on. Um, and then, I, I'm not sure about the others, like the, the big guy with the hammer or anything like that, um, what they're what they're going to do there, if they're going to make any connections there, but uh, 
in general, I think this is a very solid start. This is exactly, I think, what they needed to do, like I said, to show the first promise, to show what changes need to be made for the second one. The only thing here, though, is that the this chapter, at least, doesn't make it clear that anyone except us as the audience is finding out about this story. It's not making it clear that, like, anyone is telling, like, Emma specifically this story or that this is them reading specific things about this in books. This is just, like, we know these vague things about the promise. Audience, here's how it actually happened. So I I'm wondering how, how this will help to inform Emma, if at all, if, th if that's even the approach that they're trying to take here, which is always the interesting thing with flashbacks. Of if they try to do that or not, uh, that being, you know, the character who I suppose the flashback is actually important to, do they actually get to see it? Are they just told about it or what? Um, and so on. Um, so that's um, an, an interesting one. But yeah, you know, uh, Luvis in the flashback makes complete sense. Uh, we're going to see, I suppose, the ascendancy of the Rattry clan. And specifically, I suppose, how they go about, I suppose, supplying the demon's food source and just how many humans are given over and how exactly that comes about but um yeah i think that's pretty much everything i want to say here you know it's a it's a big chapter but there's not that much to discuss just yet i suppose i suppose we'll get tons more information as the weeks go on but uh that's been my thoughts on this chapter in the comments let me know what your thoughts are on this one how, how excited are you going into this uh, thousand year flashback the first promise and so on but uh yeah that's been the video thanks for watching and bye